Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Grayson, this is Tech With Me, and I'm sure you've heard of Roku TVs, but have you heard of Roku TVs? Okay, I know that's kind of confusing, but Roku just released their own brand of TVs. I'm sure it's kind of meant to compete with Amazon's own Amazon 4 Series Fire TVs and Fire TV Omnis, but it is kind of crazy that we have Roku, Roku TVs now. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they won't be partnering with brands like TCL or Hisense as they have in the past, but it does mean that they're gonna have their own brand, which means they're gonna have their own leg in the game, which is kind of cool. Now, the Roku TVs come in two different versions, the Roku Select and the Roku Plus. Now, personally, if you were to ask me about just straight up what my recommendation is, I would only really recommend the Roku Plus series as it's the only one of the two with a full array local dimming feature, but we're going to talk about both and you can make your own decision. Now, no surprise here in this day and age, but both of these are 4K TVs. With that being said though, the Roku Select series TVs will have a couple HD and Full HD models but only really in the smaller sizes. So the Select Series comes in five different sizes, 43, 50, 55, 65, and 75 inches. The Select Series does support HDR as well, although it only supports up to HDR10+. If you want Dolby Vision support, which I think is a no-brainer, you're gonna have to upgrade to the Plus Series. And to be fair, if you're purchasing this TV expecting a really, really strong HDR experience, just don't. This is a budget TV, and if you're going into this model expecting more than that, you're going to be disappointed. It's not going to have the best picture quality in the world, it's not going to have the best HDR performance, and it's probably not going to be very bright. It's going to be a TV, and it's going to have Roku built in, and it's 4K, which is better than it could be at least, but... That's all you really need to expect. It uses a direct lit lighting system, which unfortunately just doesn't allow it to dim throughout different areas of the screen very well, or show a very strong contrast ratio to give you better detail, which means HDR and the detail it can actually output is going to be a little bit lower than other TVs. Now, the Roku Plus series, on the other hand, does show a ton of potential as far as budget TVs go, and I'm super excited about this one. Now, the reason I'm so excited about the TCL Plus series is because to me it's very, very reminiscent of the TCL 5 series, which in my personal opinion, is some of the best bang for your buck you can get in the budget TV market right now. Now, the Roku Plus series comes in three different sizes, 55, 65, and 75 inches. Of course, it is a 4K TV, that goes without saying, and it supports both HDR and Dolby Vision. This is awesome to see in a budget TV. A, a lot of times, budget TVs don't support Dolby Vision, and... It kind of sucks because I, I personally prefer the way Dolby Vision looks to standard HDR. Now, what really makes the Roku Plus series such a good bang for your buck is it uses a full array local dimming lighting system, which essentially means exactly what it sounds like. There's a full array of backlights going along the back with a bunch of local dimming zones built in to really enhance the contrast and give it really deep darks as well as strong detail. This will upgrade your HDR experience, and personally, I don't think any TV or monitor is worth buying if it isn't at least full array local dimming. Contrast, in my opinion, is one of the most important aspects of picture quality, and without a strong contrast, you really limit the amount of detail your TV can show. On top of that, this model is also a QLED, which means it uses a quantum dot panel in order to enhance its colors, which means they should be more vibrant more accurate and just more saturated overall. And it's both of these things, the wider color gamut, the full array local dimming lighting system that really add to this TV to give it what's probably a decent HDR experience. Now, unfortunately, one of the third most important aspects to how good your HDR experience is is how bright your TV can get, and I can't find specs on that just yet. Nobody who's actually gotten their hands on this TV so far has reported the brightness of it. So we can hope that it's going to give a good HDR experience, but we can't know. And to be completely honest, it's a budget TV, so it's probably not going to get super, super bright. 
but the fact that it can dim and it can display a wider color gamut means that your HDR experience is going to be better on this than a much cheaper TV. You know, unfortunately, a ton of TVs throw HDR on the box and get an HDR certification as a marketing tool, but because they don't have the brightness, the color, or the lighting system, they're not truly HDR TVs. And until you've experienced a TV with really, really good HDR, a lot of people just think it's meaningless or like that it's a worse picture quality. And when you're watching HDR content on a TV that can't truly support HDR, but is trying to, a lot of times it is a worse picture. But a TV like this with full array local dimming, the quantum dots should at least be able to somewhat give a decent HDR experience that we can all be excited for. And maybe we can finally start using HDR to its truest potential because people can actually see how good of a picture it can give. Now, with the new Roku Roku TVs, we need a Roku counter on this. Roku has fully dived into the smart aspect of being a smart TV, which is kind of cool. On the Plus Series models, you actually get hands-free control by saying, hey, Roku, you can use this to search for shows, open apps, and more. My favorite feature though, which I don't think has been in any Roku TV before, but is in some Roku devices, is the remote finder functionality. They've added a small speaker into the bottom of these remotes that allow this to work, and it's super cool. You can either call out, hey Roku, activate the remote finder. You can activate it from a button on the TV itself, I believe, or even use the Roku smartphone app in order to ping your remote and find it whenever it's lost. Now, I personally lose all of the remotes to my devices almost daily. Okay, maybe not all of them and maybe not daily, but I lose them a lot and having the ability to ping it and listen to it to find it is a lifesaver for me. Now, the biggest downside to the Plus Series TV, at least to me, is that it's locked at a 60 hertz refresh rate. I would love to see this upgraded to 120 hertz in the next model and who knows, maybe they will. This is their first kick at being their own brand and having their own TV, so there's always room for improvement next year. Basically, most mid to low end TVs do use a 60 hertz refresh rate, which is fine, but a lot of higher middle end or higher end TVs are moving towards a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is always really good to see. This benefits you by making the motion smoother and allows you to see more detail moment to moment when watching your TV. Usually the main people with benefits are people watching lots of sports, action movies, basically anything with a lot of movement or, and let me stress this a ton, this benefits gamers. The new PS5 and Series X consoles have some games that run higher than 60 frames per second. And in order to benefit from this, your TV has to be able to refresh that image more than 60 times a second to match with that higher refresh rate. So having a TV with 120 Hertz is very, very important to having the best gaming experience possible. And with that being said, a lot of gamers now when they are shopping for a new TV are looking for something that can display 120 Hertz. So the fact that this TV doesn't have that, even though it does have the better HDR, the better color, the full array local dimming, all of these things are great for gaming because gamers want the best picture quality, the best colors, the best gaming experience possible. And the fact that they don't get the higher refresh rate, that's another side of the coin, means that this might not be the TV for the gamers who are looking to upgrade to match their new consoles. But this is still really cool. Roku seems to be moving into other avenues than just little streaming sticks nowadays. As a matter of fact, the other day I was walking through Walmart and I saw Roku apparently has some really cool smart home devices. It looks like they're making security cameras and smart outlets and even like smart light bulbs like GE does or Nanoleaf. I think this is really cool and I actually will probably be having a video come up on these devices later on, which kind of builds on this video. Last thing, another really cool feature that these Roku TVs have, if you have the Roku smart cameras, they actually interconnect with the TVs and you can watch the feed on the cameras live through your Roku Roku TV. So basically we'll talk more about that in the Roku smart home video that I have coming up, but let me guys know what you think. Are you excited about the Roku Roku TVs? 
I know that's not what they're called, but I feel like that's what they should be called. Roku Roku. I, I really like that. But anyways, thank you guys very, very kindly for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave me a like and a subscribe. Maybe even a comment. I would love to hear from you guys. We're pushing for 50 subs, so every little bit counts. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. My name is Grayson. This has been Tech With Me.